I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community. Today we're going to discuss the recall election that's coming up on November 7th, which is right around the corner. We're going to talk about how we got here and what's ahead. First, I'm going to do a quick recap for those of you who either can't remember the order in which things happened or maybe didn't didn't ever know. Um, As you know, the Brookings City Manager, Janelle Howard, was arrested at Fred Meyers for shoplifting on July 4th, 2022. Howard was then put on paid administrative leave while the city council met to figure out what to do. Former Brookings city manager Gary Milliman was brought back as city manager pro tem on the advice of the city attorney. Council requested an independent administrative investigation by Ferreris Investigations, and with multiple delays, Howard's criminal case slowly wound through the judicial system. Fast forward now through months of City Council executive sessions, which are not open to the public, the completion of a pretty damning Ferraris report, security footage from Fred Meyer that showed Howard shoplifting at least 15 other times in a three-month period, and the mayor becoming more insistent in his goal of retaining Howard as city manager. Finally, at the end of December 2022, Janelle Howard pled no contest when the county district attorney reduced her theft misdemeanor to a violation. In spite of protests from the Brookings Police Department, city staff, and the taxpayers, Howard was reinstated after seven months of paid administrative leave to her job as Brookings City Manager. What ensued were months of city council chambers packed with citizens, staff, and police officers protecting the actions of council and calling for Howard's termination. It was brought to a vote several times, with newly elected Councillor Andy Martin moving to terminate and newly appointed Councillor Isaac Hodges seconding. The vote was three to two against termination every time. At the end of February of this year, former City Councillor John McKinney came on my show and talked about the Ferreris Report, the Fred Meyer Extended Loss Report, and the questionable tactics used by Mayor Hedenskog. That podcast can be accessed on our website, kciw.org, and it's very illuminating, as McKinney was serving on council at that time and was present in every one of those executive sessions. That brings us to the recall efforts. My guest today is former city councilor and chief petitioner Dennis Striglia, and he's going to bring us up to date. Hi, Dennis, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me, Candace. Oh, it's just a delight to have you here. So first, a little bit of background. Tell us a little bit about yourself, when you came to Brookings, what your background was in terms of your work history, stuff like that. Sure. Um, I moved to Brookings in 2014, and in 2015, I served for six months on the Brookings Park and Rec Commission when a vacancy on the city council occurred after Councillor Kelly McLean moved to Arizona with three years remaining on his term. Seven candidates had applied to be considered for the vacant council seat in January 2016. Each of six of the candidates was interviewed separately by the four councillors, and, after a brief discussion, I was chosen and sworn in by Judge Richard Harper and took my seat on the dais. Uh, My scientific background, or my career background, actually, is I have a master's degree in biology from the City University of New York and spent my career conducting biological and biomedical research, drug development, most recently in cancer immunotherapy. I have held several research sciences positions in both academic institutions, like the Salk Institute and Scripps Research Center in San Diego, and several biotechnology companies involved in infectious disease research and wound healing. I have authored or co-authored over 50 scientific publications and have applied successfully for NIH grants to help fund the research. Wow. Okay, I really didn't know all that about you. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of quiet. <laughs> yeah, but, but what that tells me, and correct me if I'm wrong, What that tells me is that you are a scientist and you approach things in a scientific and organized fashion. In an an evidence and fact-based way. And that's what you did when you were on council. I I wanted to 
g give public service. And, and uh, I had tried unsuccessfully twice to run for the California State Assembly and for the Hawaii State Legislature in 2000 and 2004. Um, I wanted to basically put myself out of my comfort zone, but also help the people. Since I had just retired in Brookings, I thought, well, I might be able to provide something that, that they don't already have. So when the position became vacant, I applied for the position so that I would be outside of my comfort zone and be able to talk to people who, with whom I didn't always agree and who didn't agree with me, and that was fine. That's how consensus is reached. Right. And um, so I thought I would give it a shot. I had only been living in the city for a little over a year at that point, about a year and a half, I think. And I thought, well, there's five other candidates who have, or five or six other candidates who have lived here for longer than I have, so I probably wouldn't stand the chance. But I, um, I did read the Brookings Municipal Code ahead of time, watch, read the agendas and minutes of the previous meetings and everything, so, and attended several meetings so that I could see the, uh, the council in action. And I just thought, uh, yeah, I, I'll try. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so, good. Great. Because, you know, reality is that local government is made up of the people. I mean, exactly. that, that is, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Right. You know, it's, right. we don't want to have career politicians, uh, you know. We, agreed. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, I think that's a, a really good thing. And, and having a scientific background means that you knew how to do your homework right. when it came to things that were up for discussion and uh, some kind of a vote in front of council. You knew how to do your homework about that stuff. Right. Which yeah. is, again, really important. To right? me, to me, it was important as a counselor to not only look within Brookings and how things have been done here all the time, uh, and and just assuming that that's the best way to do things. Uh, I I think that more of a diversity on the council of people who do come from other places, people of different genders, people of different uh, political persuasions, should really all come together and act in the best interest of the city. And I really enjoy talking to people and hearing their stories. Everybody, Candace, has a different life experience. And, um, and all of those are important when, you, uh, when you're making important decisions. You want to make sure as many stakeholders as you can get involved in any controversial decision have a voice at the table. And I, I don't think that that's always been historically the, the case here. I think things are predetermined a lot of times and uh, uh, people have a lot of questions. Well, and if you look at certainly recent uh, appointments to city council, for instance, mm -hmm. um, it really is kind of they're they're looking for the same mindset to to meld with the rest of city council, which seems to me to be exactly opposite of what you should do, which is to have that diversity exactly in opinion and diversity in experiences and you know perspective and all that stuff it 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 seems like what you're doing if you if you keep appointing the same people um you're really limiting your options yeah don't expect a different outcome if they exactly. behave the same way chronically exactly exactly so yeah yeah so um how and why did you get involved in the recall effort I I'd have to say that after I, um, I left the council in January of 2019, I'd been keeping a relatively low profile. And then, of course, COVID came after that, so I wasn't going out much and, and uh, things like that. And we all but, kind of shut down for uh, yeah, nearly three yeah. years. And uh, yeah. students' school scores are showing that, unfortunately. Oh, I know. And, I know. and that's, that's really well, sad. Well, my brain cells are showing it. You, know? <laughs> you can't spend three years shut down sitting in front of your computer without your brain starting to atrophy a little bit. <laughs> Tell me about it. I know. <laughs> um, but, but I would still continue to watch the, uh, the live city council meetings on mm -hmm. cable at home. And I observed a large number of really passionate individuals on all sides of the political spectrum mm -hmm. uh, united in their, um, in their outrage at the three councilors' decision to keep Janelle in her uh, current position. I was primarily motivated when I realized that the good, decent people of Brookings, many of whom have lived here for a long time, were simply tired of having their shared concerns ignored by the governing body of our city. Several of the initial speakers threatened a recall. One Brookings police officer resigned in protest. Several city staff members wrote a letter with their concerns, which was read into the council record by former Councilor John McKinney, a fellow recall supporter. Because they were afraid to do it themselves. 
Yeah, they yes, were afraid for, for fear of re- retribution. Exactly. Exactly. And understandably so. Um, I uh, I subsequently met with many of these uh, uh, brave individuals, and after hearing their concerns, I decided to get involved in pursuing the recall along with two other chief petitioners, Hank Cunningham for the Schreiber recall and Deborah Worth for the Morosky recall. Excellent. Yeah, I was um, I was at almost all of well, I think I could say all of those meetings. I was at those meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it was hard to watch the the ordinary people, in, including our police force and you know staff, be so hurt and angry about what had happened, having Janelle take her job again, and their concerns were ignored. I mean, literally ignored. Mm-hmm. And called incivil. I mean, oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, who is being recalled, and why? Okay, Mayor Ron Hedenskog, Councillor Ed Schreiber, and Councillor Michelle Morosky are targeted for the November seventh special recall election. Each of the three chief petitioners, one for each of the candidates, submitted form SEL three fifty to City Hall on July tenth six months and one day after they served in their current terms of office, the first possible day on which a recall effort can legally be initiated. These forms contain the official stated reasons in 200 words for them to be recalled in the chief petitioner's own words. Basically, our shared basic reason for this recall is the reinstatement of a convicted thief as city manager and in charge of the city's finances and of entering into important city contracts and encumbering other debts on behalf of the city. Talk about the proverbial fox guarding the hen house. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Yeah, so I was was thinking, you know, the, the idea that it was somehow okay to have a convicted thief put back in charge of the city. I, it, it's mind-boggling how those three people thought that that was okay. It is, it's just mind-boggling. Well, and, and considering there have been several meetings, even when I was serving on the council, where we would have 40 people speak in, in opposition to or in favor of something being under consideration by the council. And then they immediately, sometimes as much as three hours of public comments mm-hmm. at, a, at a city council meeting. And then voting absolutely the opposite way of all of these people, right. many of whom were very nervous also, right. you know, to, to speak. Um, it, it, you know, we've, the people feel underrepresented and the lack of transparency of the current council, uh, starting with the mayor on down, mm-hmm. is, uh, is overwhelming. Um, yeah. He accuses us of lying when he is distorting the facts and uh, it's, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what to say much more than that. No, but, I know. Uh, yeah. And the the council, so so it went through a rough period, right? Um, the the council was made up of uh, Mayor Hedenskog and Ed Schreiber and Morosky, but it also had Brad Alcorn and John McKinney on it, both of whom were former police officers, and they were very strongly in favor of of termination of Janelle Howard um, with cause, and there are reasons for the with cause. Um, And then it was an election year. So Brad ran for county commissioner, and McKinney had just had enough of public service and didn't run again. So, So there was this change in makeup of the council at this critical time. And I know that neither of the two counselors who came on board, neither one of them really knew the backstory of this right. when they came on board. So, I mean, there was a whole lot of catch up being played for, for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And, um, and amazingly, they both, the both new counselors, wanted to terminate. <laughs> yeah, at, at 
that point in time, I was thinking, maybe things are changing, mm -hmm. uh, only to have everything uh, go downhill fairly quickly. No, it, it keeps being three to two against, mm -hmm. and it, it seemed like it didn't matter how many times um, Councillor Martin brought it up. It was always the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know, no, we're, no, we're not going to. So, so how broad-based is this effort? Yeah, I mean, the, is it just one small? I mean, that's the way they make it sound. Oh, yeah. Schreiber and Morosky and Hedenskog, they make it sound like it's a small group of, um, I don't know, political activists or something. <laughs> Which is I, just like, what? <laughs> I, I'm barely interested in politics as, as it right? is. But, uh, so who all has been involved in this? Right. I, I, I would say that the chief petitioners believe that support is widespread. Uh, both the Curry County Republicans and the Cur Curry County Democrats offices on Chetco Avenue helped by collecting pro-recall petition signatures from City of Brookings registered voters. A total of 26 people were trained as petition circulators using instructional materials available from the Oregon Secretary of State's office, and we met five or six times to discuss strategies by consensus. Now, this, can I just interrupt oh, you for a second? Sure. Because 26 people gathering signatures, n number one, they were trained, yes. so, so that means they weren't just out there willy-nilly on their own, No, right? they were they trained were by the three trained. chief petitioners, right. And 26 people collecting signatures, that's mm -hmm. huge. Yes, yeah. I, huge. I was I was really impressed. Um, but when I saw, uh, you know, the uh, amount of people uh, who were at the meetings, I thought it's probably not going to be that difficult. And when right. you just talk to people in words they can understand that are not trying to snow them under, right. um, they step forward. I'm I'm greatly impressed and and so thankful to all of these people because they spent a lot of their time and, yes. and uh, some of them every day uh, about wow. five days a week out yeah. out there we tried to uh, go into all of the different neighborhoods that we could within uh within the city of brookings city limits and um out in front of businesses out, out in front of I businesses somebody... that would allow us which yep. was only it turns out about i would say two or three percent of the ones that we actually asked right. because they felt they didn't really want to get involved. Well, and I, yeah, I understand right. if you're running a business, you know, it, right. it's, it's your prerogative. Um, but, um, but anyway, we, we met, as I said, about f uh, five or six times mm -hmm. to discuss strategies and um, that this was really a, a grassroots uh, effort. And, uh, uh, and I love that you do things by consensus. I mean that that is just I think it's important. Yeah. I I think I I don't know everything. No one person knows everything, but everybody exactly. knows a little bit. And if you might have that one little missing detail that we need as a as a piece of data that links other ones together, it's more important. And you really want to hear from everyone, even if you're discussing and I'm I'm sorry to get off off no. topic, but even if you're discussing solutions to our homeless um problem here, you have to involve everybody, including the homeless yeah. themselves, as representatives speaking yeah. speaking for themselves. Yeah. Um, it's just important to hear from from businesses. Uh, uh, small businesses aren't, in my opinion, well treated by the um, city of Brookings government. No. Um, they are forced to jump through unnecessary hoops and and other things. But uh, I, I it, it, it's beyond uh, th this topic for now. Um, the uh, circulators also, uh, interestingly, had to turn away a large number of residents from neighboring Harbor and Cape Farillo, who also wanted to sign the petitions because they felt impacted by many of the decisions that were made by the Brookings City Council. There was one example. I hate to interrupt <laughs> you again, but it's no, just, no but it was so <laughs> funny to me. Um, there was a guy who's on neighborhood Brookings neighborhood or something, and and he and it was a conversation about who was allowed to sign and who wasn't. Oh, oh okay. and so it was very you know no if, if you're if you're a resident of Brookings you can sign if you're not you really can't. Right. There are other ways to help, but you cannot sign. Right. And and this gentleman said, well, I signed anyway. You know, it's like I I signed anyway, and it's like. <laughs> Okay, I, so I wrote back and I said, and and really thank you for your passion and thank you for your commitment, and your signature is going to get thrown out because you're not, um, you know, a citizen of Brookings. So right. 
just there are many other ways of helping, you know, but <laughs> right. putting your signature on that page is not the way to help. So, well, when when the chief petitioners trains the uh, uh, using the state's recall manual, uh, train the uh, were, were trained, they were told that they have to ask three questions. First of all, uh, the city um, was uh, very generous in providing us with maps which show if you live in Brookings. It was very simple. If Do you live in the yellow area? So the number one question, do you live in the city of Brookings city limits? Right. I don't know. I live uh, here. I'll say, find it on this map. Is mm -hmm. it yellow where you mm -hmm. live? No. Okay. Even with that, you were right. There were people who did sign because when I looked at the report, uh, the summary reports from uh, Shelley Denny, the county clerk, about why signatures were thrown out, there were it, typically in, in elections about 25 to 30 percent of the signatures may be thrown out because people don't really? live in the geographical area. Wow. Because we asked that one question, we only had about, I, I would say, between 8 and 12 percent thrown That's out. That's great. The second question was, are you registered to vote in Oregon? Mm. Everybody said yes, although it turned out probably about eight of the signatures were either inactive mm -hmm. or had moved or were no longer registered and they hadn't checked themselves. Tell me about that inactive thing. Uh, that's uh, that's something I have to uh, research further. I think it has something to do with five years, but I'm going to I, I would I don't okay. want to say anything that can but be wrong. But if if you think that you can vote, right, you might want to go check just to make sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And where would you go to check uh, it? You can go to Oregon. I, I believe it's Oregon Votes. Uh, gov? It's either org or gov or yeah, com, okay. one, one of those. Okay. Uh, but there are several other places. There's a, a group called Vote 411 that I, I believe is associated with the League of Women Voters. Okay. Uh, they can do it. You could check your registration. You could change your party and everything. And by the way, if you want to vote in this election, you have to make sure that you're able to by Tuesday, October 17th, which is this coming oh, Tuesday. Oh, dear. That's a couple so, of days. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So, uh, oh, well, uh, it, 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 it had to happen re really quickly yeah. because once the, once the signatures were verified uh, by statute, uh, Shelley Denny would only have 35 days within which to schedule the, the recall election. And so things were happening pretty quickly. And it was a little bit disjointed because... When the signature papers were turned in, you had to turn them in to the city. Yes, and we, uh, let me <laughs> let me explain this, yes, okay? Because it's unbelievable. Okay. Yes. Well, on the Brookings website, it says that the city recorder is acting as the local elections official, or, or something to that right. to that effect. Well, because Janelle is so popular. Um, she uh, not only holds the title of city manager, but also the title of city recorder and hence local elections official. Uh, she also used to be involved in uh, other uh, other titles right. as well when I was on the council, and they just couldn't bestow enough titles on her, mostly from Head and Skog. Right. Uh, and but, the problem with that, with her, because, because the recall is not about recalling her, Right, we it, can't it, recall her. Exactly. She's not an elected official. She, exactly, right. she's an employee. Right, but the problem with will employee exactly, which means she can be fired. That's just the way it is. Um, but the problem with having her kind of looking over those signature pages is that it is a definite conflict of interest. Right. And really, her responsibility is not to conduct the election. Her responsibility was purely. Uh, not secretarial, ad administrative, administrative, ad administrative right. yeah. And uh, yet after we turned in the signatures, she waited two weeks to even get them to Shelley Denny. And then there was another one week, in my mind, a deliberate delay. I mean, mm -hmm. she she may have been trying to just coordinate it so that everything would happen at the same time as a normal election rather than having another one. But I don't, I don't know. In, in my mind, it, uh, it's just a complete conflict of interest. I, I yes. spoke with Shelley Denny about it. I spoke with the uh, Secretary of State's office about it. And um, basically, there's not much that they could do. Uh, that may not be entirely true. I, I really think that yeah. the state of Oregon could have heard me out saying that this is a, a possible conflict of interest and uh, appointed a local elections official pro tempore to yes. serve as an unbiased uh, exactly. member. Exactly. Um, because it's not really a potential uh, conflict of interest. 
she absolutely stands to gain financially. And that is where a conflict of interest is, is if you stand to gain financially. And right. she absolutely did. So does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it definitely is a conflict of interest. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree. All right. So how many signatures did you get? How many signatures did you have to get? Oh, okay. And then how many did you actually get? Okay. <laughs> okay. We, uh, we needed a total of 463 valid signatures verified by our county clerk, Shelley Denny, mm -hmm. for each of the individuals targeted for recall. The number 463 is not random. It was determined from the most recent gubernatorial election in 2022 and represents 15% of the total votes cast for any candidate for governor by City of Brookings registered voters. Wow. Okay. So, it's like, okay. <laughs> it, it's actually a little How more detailed than that. How do you come up with that to... formula? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it wasn't I who came up with exactly, the formula, but yeah. I did double check it and, and it yeah. agreed with, uh, with everything else. So, uh, and now how many do we get? Uh, we had 90 days in which to collect the, uh, the minimum of required uh, signatures. We uh, received the approved petition sheets on July 12th and submitted between 591 and 604 signatures, which represents approximately a 30% excess over the amount of signatures, with over five weeks to spare. Wow. Uh, Shelley Denny at the county stopped counting once she verified at least 10 more signatures than the necessary 463 signatures for each of the recall targeted public officials. So we, uh, by my calculations, we had probably 50 to 70 more than we, uh, than we actually needed. And I find it interesting. So, so there were actually, or there are actually three different recall things, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> right, right. You, you've got Hedden Skog with you as the chief petitioner. Correct. Then you've got Councillor Schreiber with Hank Cunningham as the chief petitioner. That's correct. And then you've got Morosky with Deborah Worth as the chief petitioner. Now, why, yeah. why do they do that? I guess because you can recall one and not recall the others. I, well, it, it's important, especially when you, uh, when you have to do the campaign finance reporting through Oristar, through the Secretary of State's office. I mean, any expenditures that one makes either in favor of the, uh, of the recall or against the recall should be reported to the Secretary of State's office. Ah. Um, and, uh, and it's my understanding that everything that you print should also have on there, like yard signs, for example, should also have on there paid for by whoever paid for it. Right. So, um, uh, well, that's an interesting that's, that's little just, twist, isn't Yeah, just it? a little, <laughs> little thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> so there were enough signatures to put the recall on the ballot for November 7th. Yes. So what do our ballots actually, when we get that ballot in the mail, what, what's it going to look like? Okay. Uh, the recall ballot should be fairly straightforward. Uh, it'll contain uh, these three things. Uh, first of all, the chief petitioner's reasons for demanding the recall exactly as submitted by the chief petitioner on form SEL 350 in July. So things may have changed a little bit because it's right. been a longer period of time. Uh, the second is an exact reprint of the public officer's public statement of justification from form SEL 352, which they only had until October 9th to, uh, to sign. And two of them signed on the 8th and Michelle Morosky signed on the 9th. So they were all, they, they all, what that meant was that they have decided to, um, that, that they're going to face the recall and not Because not they had the option to resign. It was Correct. either resign or put a statement in by this date. Right, correct. And they all did comply with putting in, in right. statements. Um, so then there's, there's going to be, uh, w w those two will give you sort of both sides of the story in mm -hmm. 200 words or, or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there'll be three yes or no questions. So there'll be a box to either check yes or no. And the questions will be, uh, almost verbatim probably, do you vote to recall Ron Hedenskog from the office of mayor? Do you vote to recall Ed Schreiber from the office of city councilor? Do you vote to remove Michelle Morosky from the office of city councilor? Now, uh, just one thing. It, the reasons that the chief petitioners gave for, the, for recalling these people uh, is what they felt was the, the major reason right. for, for doing it. 
you may have other reasons that you want to recall these individuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, was one of them uh, nasty in a response to you or never answered your emails or or, uh, you, or, right. or voted against the way that, that you wanted? So, um, you know, there, there are plenty of other controversial issues, as Hedden Scott himself realizes, that um, that are not they're, – they're tough decisions to make. Mm -hmm. But – you, it really is important to listen and at least pretend to listen to the people that um, that are in the audience. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so yeah, because the the sense um, the sense that we got in that room when people would stand up and talk, and and you're right, a lot of them were very nervous. It it took a lot out of them to get up and speak publicly. They were not public speakers. That was not what they wanted to do, but they felt like they had to. Right. The, the, you, you had a sense that you were a penny waiting for change, that that was the way you were being treated, that you had nothing, nothing of any worth to say, nothing of any worth to, you know, contribute towards the conversation. And it, it was so so frustrating, so yeah. frustrating. And and a lot of people would would ask me all the time when I when I was on the council, uh, why did they give all the counselors these uh, council agenda reports? Because it tells you what you're supposed to ask for in a motion. I'm like, well, it's supposed to be a recommended motion that it it really. Yes. But when they give the background, it's always slanted into the way that they uh, that they want. So for newer counselors, uh, you know, when they when they first come in and are ripe for the picking for bullying by uh, the mayor, uh, and getting him as as you had pointed out before to um, this is the way we do things. Right. Um, this is the way it's always been done. Uh, yeah, that is my pet peeve. I know. I, I, I things know. can always be better. I things know. Things <laughs> can always be better. You just need to have the right people advising. You. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, that's, yeah. that's pretty much all I wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So when they get the new guys on, mm -hmm. and you know they've had a chance to indoctrinate them, kind of, oh, right, you know, right. that that can be problematic. Right. But eventually, if a counselor is on long enough, mm -hmm. um, they will learn yes. to think on their own. Right. I mean, it's okay to have an opinion, even if you say something off the wall. I mean, right. I, I, there, I've been at several meetings where uh, several counselors have surprised me by what they said. Um, and it's important not to make up your mind going into the meeting, because part of the meeting uh, for for every motion that's made at at these uh, at, at these meetings is um, is to have some discussion among the counselors after uh, the staff report has been has been given. Then, based on that, they shouldn't just blindly follow what the city staff is recommending, but think, okay, think in terms of the budget, think in terms, can we afford this? Are there more pressing matters? Is the infrastructure, uh, you, you know, we, right. could we use money exactly. more for that? Exactly. So um, it, it, it's just that people just didn't understand why they were given this beforehand, but it is to educate the counselors with background information if they're new and things like that. So it does serve a purpose. And don't you get the staff report before the meeting? Do yes, you... yes. Okay. Uh, so... we, we get it, uh, well, the... Uh, the most people get it about three days before. Okay, um, but and, that does give you an opportunity if you're on top of it to go and do a little bit of your own research, right? Uh, and and as long as it's not a quasi judicial uh, matter where you're introducing new information for the first time, uh, that that has that's subject to different uh, right. you know guidelines. And if you wanted to change the agenda, you would have to do it by a vote of the council in the very beginning. If something, if an emergency item came up or something, mm -hmm. but most of the time, if it's not in the in the agenda, don't bring it up at a meeting. And uh, right, you know, right. Uh, but it's just uh, the people were a little bit confused about about that. And I think that it's just important to know that that that's just it actually is helpful to those counselors who choose to read it before the meeting. Right, right, so, and yeah. think about it. Uh, for yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> think about the ramifications I mean, just, of a just vote. Just think. I mean, okay. no, it's being a being a counselor even if we're successful with the uh, with the recalls and we and we get three new people in, I would just advise anybody who's planning to run for office to think twice about it. You really have to have the city's interests yes. number one over any um, uh, predisposed uh, prejudices or biases that right. that you might uh, you might have and it does take time, and it mm -hmm. does take research. Um, uh, you know, by looking at uh, other places like the League of Oregon Cities to do city by city comparisons, big right. cities, small cities, 
you know, how are our salaries versus uh, theirs and things like that. So uh, it, it's as much work as you want to put into it. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of uh, a lot of counselors are just uh, just think that it would be easier to just say yes, and there's five zero votes on every single measure. Right, right, right. Which is unfortunate. Right. I mean, it really is unfortunate yeah. um, because you need to be thinking about what the issues are. It it is definitely work. I mean, I have been at every single council meeting now for I don't know. I'm going to say at least a year and a half. And There'll be a special place in heaven. I will, right. <laughs> absolutely, because I can't tell you how many executive sessions there have been. Don't tell me anything about an executive session. I won't session. tell you anything about it, but can I tell you how long they were? Uh, <laughs> can I tell you how many hours well, we I, spent? Well, I, I know how many of them there were and were shocked at the, the amount of... Uh, uh, one can't help but think that it was for not being transparent by having an executive session to hide the details from the public. That lasts four hours? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I do believe a special place in heaven for anybody who can sit through that. Yeah. But, but yes, <laughs> you know, um, it is work. Uh, just me going as media and trying to make sense of what they're saying, you know, I have to do some background. Sure you know, scrounging around trying to get information right. so that I understand what they're talking about. Right. And that's important as a journalist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's important if, it's important as a citizen, you know, yes. if you are going to actually have any kind of input into your government, you need to be educated about what the issues are. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's important if, if you're going to, as, as you said, if you're going to be a representative of the people in a city position, you really can't just be one issue, you know, that right. it just can't be that. Right. You, you really have to have a desire to govern mm -hmm. and I, help. And I would also really like to see somebody, let's say between the ages of 18 and 25, serve on the council, because I think the, the youth of Brookings is really underrepresented. And, yes. um you know, I, I, you know, now that I'm getting up there An in years as well as all of us, right? <laughs> I, I know uh, what you mean. <laughs> I, I have no idea what they're talking about sometimes when they yes, <laughs> when they I talk know. to each other. But it's important because yeah. they live here, and um, you don't want all of our students once they hit eighteen to book out of here for a larger city or you no. know a chance to make better money or uh, a, a decent place to. Uh, to be able to afford uh, a to house. To be able to buy a house. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. I think it's important, you know, because most of the people on the council tend to be older. And I, I think that my, my preference would be to at least have one person who's young. And it would be nice to have men and women on the, um, yeah. on the council. And maybe so, more than just one token woman. Uh, yes. Just say. Yes. yes. Just say. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if the recall is successful, then right. what happens? Okay, if the recall is successful for all three mm -hmm. of the targeted officials, then they will remain in office for a few weeks until the county clerk certifies the results of the election. Their positions will then be declared vacant, at which point Brookings City Charter mandates in Section 20 that a vacancy in the city council may be filled, may either be filled within 60 days by one appointment by a majority of the council. Unfortunately, this won't be co possible because there won't be a quorum since only two of the five counselors would remain. Right. So there's only other choice is by a special election when the number of vacancies in the council exceeds the number of members holding office. So that's, that's why the, uh, the uh, recall election will happen. So- so that uh, sounds like it has to happen within 60 days. Uh, uh, that, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, if I didn't say that, I meant No, you to, did. I, oh, oh you okay, did. yeah. It, uh, but, but that means two months. Uh, it, right. Maximum two months that it After has After the vacancies to. are declared. Right. Uh, that's my understanding. Right. Um, and uh, at this point, I just want to state unequivocally that had even one of the three officials resigned rather than face a recall election- the remaining four could have appointed someone, and the second election would not be necessary as it would have prevented any issue regarding quorum. 
Their egos are ultimately what will cost the people of Brookings an additional $30,000 for the second election if all three are recalled, as I hope they will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, really, when you, when you look at the history of this, they are the ones who have pushed this along. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they blame the people for, you know, spending all of this money. And you, the reality is it, it was them. If they had, A, if they had listened when their citizens said, please do not put a thief back in that position, mm. if they had listened, then none of this would be happening. Right. And right. they had opportunities. I mean, yeah. they did And especially someone like Michelle Murawski, who flip-flopped on it yes, uh, mysteriously by, uh, by, uh, by a motion to reconsider. Yeah, which um, is like, I, yeah, I who even that heard of that, from. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guarantee you she didn't know what that was. I tell you, neither did Head and Scott, because <laughs> I used it once uh, back in the day because I knew about it, but uh -huh. they didn't know what I, uh, what I meant. Wow. So um, wow. uh, unfortunately, I taught him something, uh, yeah, that e is e unfortunate. even though he's the historical um, <laughs> guru uh, for Brookings. <laughs> so Head and Scott, Murawski, and Schreiber have all made statements defending their actions calling the citizens who spoke at the meetings incivil, which I think is not even a word, but I'm, you know, I think it's uncivil, but whatever, um, and wringing their hands about the enormous amount of money this recall effort will cost Brookings. So what are your thoughts on that, Dennis? <laughs> well, first off, one would think that by now our mayor should know that the word is uncivil. Yeah, you'd think. <laughs> um, as he has been on several occasions to those nervous residents who were courageous enough to speak to the council for their first times during public comment, only to be shushed, reprimanded, <laughs> yes. or censored by the mayor. Unbelievable. He also referred to his opposition as disrupting, threatening, using bullying tactics, exaggerating rumors, and lying all of which he himself are guilty. Yeah. A recent mailer from the three targeted officials states, no recall, stop the madness. And I just wonder whether the taxpayers of Brookings actually footed the bill for this political mailing, and we'll be researching this more in the future. I spoke with one of the other chief petitioners, Hank Cunningham, uh, in charge of the uh, Schreiber recall campaign this morning, and he asked me to include some of his comments in my interview today. Can I, may I? Mm, uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, here's what Hank said. By all means, stop the madness. However, in doing so, let's bear in mind that the madness has been caused and perpetuated by the current leadership at City Hall. The most direct and appropriate way to stop the madness is to eliminate the cause by voting yes to recall Hedenskog, Schreiber, and Murawski. Labeling the petitioners as, quote, big city political activists is as accurate and ridiculous as all of their other unfounded accusations. Interestingly, none of us are elected officials, nor are we seeking office. We simply want and demand good government in the city where we choose to live. So please, Hedenskog, Schreiber, and Murawski, don't question our rights. Uh, yeah. Not, I, I'm sorry. D don't question our rights, not our son, uh, our loyalties. Yeah. Uh, and then on the on the topic of the uh, enormous amount of money that the council right. has claimed that firing Janelle would have cost the city, Mr. Cunningham added, "Please have the honesty and integrity to quantify your settlement cost estimates. I, for one, don't buy the three hundred thousand dollar figure. Where did it come from? Name your source." Oregon is an at-will state in terms of employment, including contractual employment. Any competent attorney could find ways to nullify Howard's contract for cause, although even that distraction, I'm sorry, even that distinction isn't really necessary. Let's get serious here, please. Yeah, yeah. And, and the interesting thing to me is that um, they had, by mid-October, the council had uh, a summary of a report in front of them from F Ferreris investigations. Mm -hmm. And what Ferreris was doing, he was looking into the administrative side of it. So Janelle's criminal case was going through the courts. But in the meantime, with the urging of the city um, attorney, the council hired this 
independent investigation company to do an administrative investigation. Right. So his, their um, task was to see if Howard had broken any rules for contract or any of her um, duties as city administrator. And, you know, John McKinney said in his interview with me that Ferreris came up with at least six reasons why administratively she could be fired with cause, which means that she would not have gotten her severance pay. Right. And I remember, uh, I remember John talking also about that there were criminal and administrative reasons. And the city council obviously is not the ones to deal with the criminal. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's for, the, uh, for the DA's office. Uh, why the DA uh, uh, lowered her, uh, her initial offense from a misdemeanor to a violation, I, I don't know enough about legal things. I, I have heard that it happens more often than not. Um, uh, but, and it had uh, been but, on the calendar. I mean, that, but the fact that the, her case dragged out so long. For I months. mean, I'm sorry. I don't. I really don't think Curry County's uh, legal system is that overwhelmed as, as other more populated counties right. are. Right. Um, so I'm. I, I've just learned to be suspicious, but I did grow up in the South Bronx, so uh, right. maybe that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it's all a little. I mean, if you if you start actually looking under things, the the comments and the justifications, um, you find all the holes because the the number that Councillor Schreiber is quoting somewhere around three hundred thousand. The majority of that is actually uh, comp time and vacation time and sick leave that Ms. Howard has accrued over the years that Correct. she has worked for the city of Brookings. Right. And, and you me... cannot, you can't rip those away from her no matter what. Exactly. I, so, uh, so Schreiber's false claims that were uh, costing the city $300,000 all he did, and and the other two councilors, uh, uh, the, the mayor and, and Councilor Morosky did, uh, was kick the can down the road. They have to pay this money to uh, Janelle because she's shrewd enough to have negotiated yes. this into her contract and with at an some inflated point, salary. Yes, and at some point when she leaves, whenever she leaves. She's still going to get that money. That's right. So kicking the can down the road is not good governance, and don't sugarcoat it. No, and, and don't yeah. blame the recall effort for that right. because that was on that's always been on the plate right that wasn't that wasn't anything to do with recall right yeah no it's it's um <laughs> it's a little bit ludicrous so dennis what is next um we've got very little time before the ballots are mailed out um that leaflet flyer whatever that showed up in some people's mailboxes that, you know, came from Schreiber and Moroski and Hedenskog. Hope which, are, which didn't indicate who paid for it. No, I know. It didn't say paid for by. It would be, it'd be good to know who paid for that flyer. But that flyer is appearing in people's mailboxes. Mm -hmm. So what, what does the th next three weeks look like before... We get to the election. Well, I mean, the ballots are going out within the next couple of days. Right. I I suspect that it might get ugly. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, I've had a few threats of my own that I won't go into right here, and it, it it's part of the territory. But I know. you know, it it's but not, it's it, it, too it, bad. It, it actually only emboldens my inspiration to have gotten involved in this in the first place. Uh, we don't know whether or not we'll be successful, and and, and to tell you the truth. The three people being recalled aren't necessarily bad people. They just made really poor decisions. I agree. They're not and bad people. No, I mean talking to them, they're 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 all nice, I, you know, or they can be at least when they're not yes. sitting up on the dais above we the people who happen to be below the city council instead of right. them reporting to us. Right. Exactly. So. And it's it is true when when they say that they um, have the best interests of Brookings at heart. 
that may very well be true, and it probably is true, because why on earth would you volunteer for a position like that and work as hard as you have to work if you're on city council, unless you thought you had the best interests of the city at heart? Maybe. But having the best interests of the city at heart and making good decisions are not the same thing. They're just not. Right. And in order to make good decisions, you need to have good advice. And if you're going to represent the people and the people are telling you how they feel and it's not the way you plan to act, you might want to rethink your motivation behind it. Right, right. Because it's not about getting your own way no matter what. Right. And, and that's what it, it was definitely just starting to feel that way. Just civil discourse and dialogue among as many people as possible. I mean, I, that was one thing that I was really sad to see the city council get rid of was the uh, tourism promotion um, advisory committee. Right. Uh, money was being spent really well by getting great events. I mean, like like I was uh, active in the Monarch Festival mm -hmm. and, and Brookings becoming a Monarch City USA, the first one in Oregon yep. back in 2017. You know, you get, yes, you want uh, what they used to say, heads in beds, I think was, right. a, was the right. term, and, and bring people in. Now they're going out. First of all, for five years, they used it to to fund a, a golf course event center or whatever the yep. term they want to put on it. Yep. And uh, whereas a small minority of the people who live here use that golf course. Right. So for five years, I think they took $10,000 a year to put toward that event center. Yep. And then, um, you know, it, it, there were, now they're, they're funding... Uh, things like the fireworks and and uh, the the nature's light displays, both Azalea of which are are, are are good for I mean, yeah, Azalea are, Festival. are good for them, right? Yeah, the Azalea Festival, absolutely. But those aren't the people who really need you know five hundred or a thousand dollars to get a, a little event going on in uh, in town. And at least with the tourism promotion committee, uh, you know, you're, you're, we're members of the public, so yes. we have a pulse on on what people want. And when they did away with that, uh, that that was just another. Yeah. Another thing to pile on. I, I agree, because really what you want is more participation right. by your citizens, yes. not less. Right. So what they, in effect, did was make the participation less mm -hmm. rather than more. And, right. and yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. I mean, I, I remember um, Michael Frederick coming in front of the uh, TPAC several times with an idea about, okay, I'll, I'll, let's do this, and, right. and we've got an idea for this kind of a festival, and can we get a little bit of funding here mm -hmm. just to start us off? And, you know, we, we did. We gave him funding. We gave the Mushroom Festival right. seed right. money funding. I mm -hmm. mean, we gave the, the Monarchs seed money. I mean, it and that's what the point was, because heads in beds, yeah, people are going to come here mm -hmm. if we've got a new festival that nobody's ever been to. Right. Yeah, they're going to come here. Yeah. They're going to want to see what it is. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and quite frankly, I don't want to have another monarch festival here as long as we have our current mayor in office. No, I know. I know. It's so, just uh, not. When Jake Pieper was mayor, he was all for it. His daughter was one of uh, the big monarch at ambassadors. And uh, yes. oh, she is just one of the most brilliant little... Uh, yes. Well, she's probably not a kid anymore now. But, you know, she's uh, starting to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but there was a sense of more of a sense of camaraderie and, yes. and listening to people and, and just sensible yes. uh, uh, yes. ways of doing things. Well, I had thought about... Um, taking a, a proclamation that the Association of Community Media has come up with. It's an organization to which KCIW belongs. And um, October 20th is Community Media Day. Mm -hmm. And it, how perfect, like, to go to city council and say, hi, we'd like a proclamation about October 20th being Community Media Day. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to fly. Well, I'm sorry, but there should have been a proclamation when KCIW, as little as it is, got an Edward Edward Ord Murrow Award for yeah. uh, for uh, journalism as well, yeah. uh, or at least some recognition by yes. the city. I mean, it's our little community radio station. This is fun. So. But it but it took them two and a half years to recognize Jay. Uh, that that was a political fiasco. That's grandstanding at its worst. I felt so bad for uh, for Jake at that uh, at that meeting. I know, I know. I mean, it was just so much. Uh, yeah. nonsense. Yes, yes. Especially coming from the two people that it was coming from, who <laughs> neither one of them What's are the Jake's friends, the, the, I'm the, just saying, right? The pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, no, right? exactly, <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so what what do you need? Do you need anything from people? Um, do you need help if people want to help with the effort? If people who are listening want to help, like what 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 is it that you need going forward? Well, I guess uh, off the top of my head, I could uh, just think that people can help by sending pro recall letters to the editor uh, at the pilot and. Uh, uh, e- even the Gold Beach, uh, I'm sorry, Curry County Re- Reporter right. and the Port Orford News yeah, right. in, in Curry County. Because I've been contacted by a lot of people in those cities who just tell me, we feel really bad for you down there in Brookings yeah. about what's going on. And uh, I'm not seeing as much in the pilot as I thought I was going to. And I'm wondering if they're actually publishing people's letters. Uh, it. Uh, <sighs> I think they have their certain deadlines, and mm. occasionally a deadline may have been missed because of it being right up against their mm. their deadline. I think they're trying their best to to present both sides of the uh, of the argument, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I I think I I would tend to think that out of town newspapers and and some of the TV stations that I spoke with in in Medford and and Jefferson Public Radio and and other places used the word recall or told their headlines were more accurate than uh these sort of mollified or softened uh, right. headlines that the that the pilot would right. use and i and i you know i found myself wondering but one can never tell and and different reporters have different slants and uh right. we're just happy with any press because so many people were asking uh you know who who are you recalling biden right. And right. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, we can't do that. We are not national. <laughs> that's, that's for the Senate, right? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We're 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 staying local. Although it's funny to me, you know, I I have often said that I think we are the microcosm of the macrocosm. The stuff that yes. goes on here right. is it's almost unbelievable. If you are on the inside and you know how things are going down, right? It is. Almost unbelievable. Well, I, I frequently frequently said if I ever wrote a book about uh, the experiences or, or living in in Brookings, and it was a true story, it would be filed by the library in the fiction Absolutely. section because no one would possibly believe. And probably science fiction. I mean, <laughs> you know, like way outside the reality. I mean, it it really does feel that way. You yeah. know, it's yeah. it's like oh, I can't believe this happened. Right. Now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, let so me, we're uh, just let me, about out of time. Why don't you give me some contact information for anybody who needs to get in touch with you or whatever? Great. Okay. Um, so uh, what I'd like is uh, if anybody wants to put up a vote yes to recall yard sign or make a small contribution to one, two, or all three of the recall committees, um, at, or and if any of your listeners are interested in helping or donating during the next week, uh, or, or the next three weeks, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, please have them email me at trigliad at yahoo.com. That's T R I G L I A letter D at yahoo.com. Um, I would also like to point your listeners who are active on Facebook to follow our informational only Brookings Recall 2023 page for up to the minute information on the recall. It also contains many of the historical documents since the beginning of the recall for your reading pleasure. Uh, ballots will be mailed out next week, need to be received by the county 8 p.m. on November 7th, and you need to be registered to vote by Tuesday, October 17th. Thank you very much for your time, Candace. It's been wonderful. Dennis, thank you so much for coming on. And if the recall is successful, you will be back, buddy. I certainly will. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening. A working democracy requires participation. When your ballot comes, please vote. Encourage your friends and neighbors to vote. I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community. 